Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting little mini PC. Well, this is actually a tiny PC, that's what they're calling it, because the whole volume of this setup is actually only one liter. This is known as the Lenovo Think Center M75Q Tiny Gen 2. Now this was recently on sale over at Lenovo's website and eBay, so I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up to take a look at it. Plus, I actually was looking for a smaller PC to replace my main work PC which just happens to be an older ThinkCenter M92P. It's the same exact size, but that one was actually powered by a 4th gen i5. But this new version, the M75Q, is powered by the Ryzen 5 Pro 4650G. And I mean, yeah, even though these things are designed for work, there's no reason at all we can't game on this thing and use it kind of as a little set-top box for emulation, PC gaming, and multimedia playback. You can also pick this up with the Ryzen 3 Pro 4350G and even up to the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G. So along with the PC, it also came with a wired mouse, a wired keyboard, we also have a stand, our Bluetooth Wi-Fi antenna, and a 65-watt power supply. That's about it that came in the box. But I mean, as you can see, this thing is tiny. And like I mentioned, I've actually been using one of the older M92Ps as my main work PC for the last three years straight. So even though we're working with such a small form factor PC, we actually got some pretty good I.O. Starting with the front here, from the left to the right, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It's a headphone mic combo, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, a single USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port, and our power button. Moving around back, again from the left to the right, we have our power input, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, and our gigabit Ethernet port. So right out of the box, this will actually support up to three displays, HDMI, display port, and USB Type-C on the front. And like we saw with the unboxing, this does come with a stand. Now, the unit that I ordered actually has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It was the cheapest version they had that used the 4650 GE, and that's exactly what I was looking for. But I have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz laying around, so I figured I'd go ahead and upgrade it real quick. Plus, I definitely want this to be running in dual channel because that'll significantly increase the performance of the built-in Radeon graphics here. Now, pulling the top off is pretty easy. It does have a spot for a 2.5-inch drive, either mechanical or SSD. Looks like it's got a smaller cooler, but I think they've designed this pretty well. We'll have to see when we get into testing. If we flip this over, we can actually access that M.2 SSD and our RAM slots. This does support dual-channel RAM up to 64 gigabytes, but uh, like I mentioned, I had 16 gigabytes laying around here. And I'm going to go with the fastest that I can put in here, which is 3200 megahertz. And it's super easy to upgrade this. So I'm going with two 8 gigabyte sticks of Crucial at 3200 megahertz. So I've just upgraded the RAM. And I'm going to leave this SSD like it is. Maybe later on down the road, I'll add a 1 terabyte SSD to this. But this will work out perfectly for my needs at the moment. So before we get into testing, I just want to go over the basic specs here. For that CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 4650GE. 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.3, boost up to 4.2. As for the GPU, we have that built-in Radeon 7 at 1900 MHz, 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, a 256 GB M.2 NVMe SSD. This does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6, so it's 802.11ax and Bluetooth 5.1. And as for the operating system with the base configuration that I have here, it comes with Windows 10 Home 64-bit, but this can be upgraded to Linux or Windows 10 Pro if you want to do that down the road. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some testing. Like I mentioned, even though this is meant to be kind of a work PC, there's no reason we can't test out multimedia and gaming performance of this mini PC. Personally, I think something like this would make an awesome little HTPC given the form factor here. All right, so here we are. I got a lot of stuff installed to test out. We're gonna test out some gaming, some 4K video playback, we'll run some benchmarks, we'll test out some web browsing. As you can see, we have that 4650 GE, six cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz, and the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. And just to give you a look here, uh, it doesn't really say Radeon 7, but that's exactly what it is, and it is clocked up to 1900 megahertz and it does clock up to that speed when gaming. 
So far, it's been a really enjoyable experience using this little machine. I mean, it definitely has enough power to do basically anything. Um, as for web browsing, we'll just head over to Lenovo. And with that built-in Wi-Fi 6, I mean, this thing is super snappy. Everything loads up just fine. Uh, and this is basically how I got this from their President's Day sale on eBay. You can check that out. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Uh, let's check out some WebGL performance here. Just head over to WebGL samples. So we're sitting at 500 fish. Here's our FPS up here. We're at 60. Go to 1,000. We're still sitting tight at 60. 5,000. 10,000. 15. And I knew it was going to drop down around there. So yeah, around 20,000 fish on screen with WebGL starts dipping down. But at 15,000, we're still sitting steady at 60. Let's go ahead and take a look at some 4K video playback from YouTube. Just skip in a little bit. Uh, make sure we're at 4K. Actually, I think that was sitting at 5K. Full screen. Stats for nerds. 4K going to be great. On the initial load-in, we had five drop frames. Not a big deal at all. I mean, this chip will handle 4K video playback from any of your favorite apps or natively. Amazon Prime, Hulu, and even YouTube, 4K and even 5K will work just fine. And let me go up to 5K. And since I reloaded inside of the app, I mean, we only had one drop frames while it loaded up. So 4K video playback on the M75Q, not an issue whatsoever. So yeah, for the main work that I do on these mini PCs, it's going to do just fine. And even the older M92P that I was using just a couple days ago with that i5 did work out pretty well. But when I have some downtime, I like to do a little bit of gaming on these tiny machines. And we're going to get to that in a second. But the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, looking pretty good with the 1210, multi, 6442. I was actually really impressed with both of these scores here. Next on the list, we have Cinebench, coming in with a multi-core score of 8,356. Still looking pretty good here. I also ran PC Mark 10, 5,591, and as you can see from the chart below, this is better than 67% of all other PCs tested with this benchmark. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, total score 14,565. I also ran Fire Strike and we scored a 3,567. Finally, Time Spy with a 1,386. So it's looking pretty decent for a super small form factor PC like this, but now it's time to move into some real world gaming and see how this thing performs. So first up, CSGO, 1080p, high settings, looking really good here. By the end of this run, I had an average of 117 FPS. So right off the bat, this is actually looking really good when you consider the form factor of this tiny PC. Next on the list, we have Street Fighter V, 1080p, medium settings, and I did go in and change the resolution scale from 100 to 90 because I had some dips down to 58, but with these settings here, it's going to run at 60 all day. Skyrim Special Edition 1080p medium settings. It's actually looking pretty good here. We're at 60, but every once in a while I do see it dip down. I've actually seen it drop as low as 56, but if I didn't have that FPS counter up in the top left hand corner, I'd never even notice it. So here's GTA 5, and when you step back and really take a look at this PC and how small it is, seeing this game running at 1080p normal settings with an average of 63 FPS is pretty impressive. You'll see it jump up and you'll see it dip down a little bit, but if I turn VSync on, I could lock this at 60 and play this game comfortably at 1080p normal settings. I mean, this is really impressive when you factor in the form factor of this PC.
Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low settings with dynamic resolution scaling turned off, I got an average of 62 FPS. So with Doom Eternal, I was really hoping we could do 1080p with it, but I did have to drop it down to 1600 by 900 low settings, and I got an average of 68 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. Now I did try this at 1080p and I was getting an average of around 15 FPS, but when I dropped it down to 720p low, I actually got an average of 33 FPS out of this one. So through all of my tests, I also monitor power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and this thing does a pretty decent job. At idle, it's around 12 watts, 4K video playback, 18. Gaming, it jumps up to 54, and the maximum I could get this to pull out of the wall was 68 watts. Now one thing I was worried about with this system were CPU temps, but they're actually pretty decent here. At idle, we're around 38 degrees Celsius, 4K video playback, 44. Gaming it jumps up to 70, and the fan noise on this really isn't that bad while we're gaming, but it can ramp up, and even at that highest speed, it's really not that bad, because in my extreme test, which maxes out all 6 cores, 12 threads, and the GPU, we were able to hit thermal throttle with this chip at 91 degrees Celsius, but this is an extreme test, and in everyday use and even gaming, you'll never see these kind of temps. So going into this, I actually wasn't sure if I was going to keep this machine or not, but after testing it out, this is going to be replacing my older Lenovo M92P, the one on the right here, and as you can see, it's the same form factor, so I already got a spot set up for it, and uh, I'm definitely excited about more power out of this mini PC. So yeah, this is something I can definitely recommend if you're looking for a small form factor PC for work, part-time play, maybe even a super small form factor HT PC. And the price on this for what we're getting actually isn't a bad deal right now as making this video. This is their President's Day sale, and I paid $554 out of pocket for this tiny PC. Now, if this isn't on sale, I could not recommend it at the price they're charging on their website. If you can catch this on sale, like the one that's going on right now as making this video, President's Day 2021, I think this is an awesome little choice if you know what you're getting into and you're looking for a super small form factor, great performing mini PC. Just to give you an idea of how small this Lenovo PC is, this is a 4K 32-inch BenQ monitor. Right underneath it, we have the Lenovo M75Q. I mean, it doesn't take up any space at all. And this is my basic setup. i got a keyboard, mouse, always got a controller handy. I'm going to go ahead and launch a game. Now, this is definitely not a machine that's geared towards gaming. But in my opinion, I know graphics do matter, and they do matter to me. But if I truly love the game, I don't mind playing the game at 1080p low. Something like Forza Horizon 4 looks absolutely amazing on a good monitor, 1080p, low settings. And as long as I can run it at full speed, I'm good to go. And I love the fact that we have such a small setup here. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. I am planning on a full emulation video. I think we're going to get some great performance out of this little machine. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing that. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.